Okay, guys, so uh, I'm going to do a quick recording to show us some um, model making setup. This is actually drawing net. Now, I'm going to get you to do it quite specifically following me um, so that we get it the same. And uh, I'll go quite quickly. And I'm going to be basically getting you to start off producing that layout. Okay, so we're going to do that quickly first of all and we'll then take it from there. So, my first one is going to be my, basically I'm going to work over on the left hand side of the page and I'm going to start by drawing these two vertical lines down here. And they have to be correctly positioned. So I'm going to do one line, making sure I'm lined up with the side of my page. Okay, I'm not measuring it in particularly, but now that I've drawn one line, I'm going to measure from that accurately, and I'm coming across four centimetres. Okay, so that was four centimetres at the top, four centimetres at the bottom, and I'm then going to draw my line between those two. Nice and lightly, this is a construction line. Okay, now I'm gonna start measuring onto that. That's giving me my vertical line running straight up and down. And what I'm gonna do is measure down a certain point and then just say that's gonna be my top edge. So that was two centimeters and two centimeters. That's going to be the beginning of the shape. And basically it's going to be increments of two centimeters all the way through this. Um, so I'm going to measure down on my sheet now. From that line, I'm going to measure down two. Then I'm going to measure down from that mark, eight. And then I'm going to measure down from that mark, two. Okay, I'm going to do the same over on the next side. I'm going to measure down two, then eight, then two. Okay, now the top and bottom line are going to be quite dark. I'm going to join those up. But the lines in between are going to be just a bit lighter. Now I'm actually going to extend a bit past this line, all right, and I'll explain why in a minute. I'm going to set my ruler up at two centimeters on this line. So that position is at two, and I'm going to measure back to zero. And on the top line, I'm going to measure forward two. When I get to that point, make a little mark. Now I'm going to come down here. I've got this one on two. Push forwards. On this one, I'm going to come out to eight. Okay. And then on there, these two side or this side one, I'm going to do is a very light line first of all. It's actually going to be a dashed line. This one on the left. I'm going to do as a solid line. And these two in between, I've got my construction lines there. I'm going to do a little dash on top of them because those end up being bend lines for our model making that we're doing here. Okay, so there's my dotted line there. I've got a dotted line here. Now I'm actually going to extend this across. If you look at this object, I've got the, the top bit. If that's the base, this is the top. It has to be the same size. Top and bottom have to be the same size. So that's four centimeters. 
Um, I'm going to use my existing edges just to squash it forward a bit. So notice how I didn't measure that then. That's just me doing a construction line. And onto that construction line, I'm now going to measure from here and here four centimetres and four centimetres. Okay, so there's that mark and that mark. Now again, this is going to have a glue flap on it. So I'm going to turn it into a dashed line. Now as you're doing this, if you want to do a dashed line, it's better. If it's taking you ages and ages, um, I don't mind if you just do it as a nice light line, first of all. So I'm just going to join up this point here and this point here. They need a line because they're a bend line. And the same there. So when you're watching me do this today, guys, you might want to um, pause it and do an activity or you might want to watch the whole video and then then carry it through. Um, it's quite a lot of measurement, so it's probably worth watching a bit, pausing it, and then you do your, your part. Okay, so I've now got to do, um, at the moment, the bit that joins it together because it isn't a full shape at the moment. It needs something that, that is a glue flap, and that's often what people forget. Now, I draw my glue flaps by using the numbers on my ruler, and if I line up the edge of the ruler, uh, sorry, the bottom of the numbers, you can only do this with a transparent ruler, the bottom of the numbers against my line, and I'm going to look down at the bottom here as well, I can use that little bit as a distance for all of my glue flaps. And on this case, you'll see what I'm doing in a minute, watch this whole bit before you do your next bit. Okay, so there's my construction lines for my glue flaps and they are the distance of my number to my edge. But it could be anything. If you make them too big, they're really difficult to work with. If you make them too small, it's impossible to get them to glue anything. So literally now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna freehand this. I stay slightly away from the corner and I just do them. Oh, I don't know what angle that is. It's probably about 30 degrees, not quite as steep as 45 degrees but they're about 30 degrees off the horizontal in that case. Do the same here. So not quite going into the corner. If you want to use a ruler to do that, go for it. Nothing wrong with that. I just find for me it saves a bit of time. Okay, so that glue flap joins there, that glue flap joins there, that one joins there, that one joins there. What we now need to do is to think about how this top bit joins those two parts and this end piece comes around to this side. So you sort of loop it over to join that side. So I'm gonna use my, um, my number method again. So line the numbers up with that edge there. Draw a construction line and then freehand it into position. And then it needs a glue flap here and a glue flap here using exactly the same method. Now, if you forget a glue flap, it's not the end of the world, but if you forget all the glue flaps, it'll make this a nightmare. So you're better off restarting it if you've forgotten. Um, so there's my two lines, top and bottom. So I'll just freehand those in. If you're doing really posh packaging, if you make a beautiful box of chocolates, you don't want to do glue flaps all over the place. You might want to think about how you do it with a bit more care. But for our purposes, that is mission accomplished. I'm just going to put some dashes on this line here. To remind me not to cut it. And then I'm just going to darken that bit of the glue flap in. Shape one. Essentially what we're going to do now is we're going to repeat that process with, with a slightly different set of measurements. Um, the layout that I'm showing you works well for an A4 sheet of paper. If you're really good at this you might vary it a little bit but um, 
I think let's roughly stick to what I'm doing. So if you look at my page now, we've just created this bit here, over here, taking about um, 10 minutes, which is great. The next one will probably take about 10 minutes also. Okay, so the next one, I'm gonna work in the top right. I'm gonna draw a line parallel with my edge. That's my starting point not measured on it at all. And then at some point, I make a decision about where I'm gonna start drawing. And the way I'm doing it is I'm putting my four on the line, because then I can measure to zero. Same down here, four and then down to zero. And then join those two up. I'm trying to do these shapes in about 10 minutes each, so that this is a 30 minute task and then it's an hour long task by the time you guys do it. So hopefully that's, that's my prediction. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just choose somewhere down here to do a line and that's gonna be the beginning of my shape. And I get it lined up by lining up my numbers. That helps me get it at 90 degrees. And I'm gonna just do this one as a dashed line. Okay, that's, that's item number one. Now from that, we're gonna measure down a series of twos. So from that line, we're gonna measure down two, four, six, and eight. All right, now on the right-hand side, we're gonna do the same thing. Two, four, six, and eight. Okay, and then I'm gonna just choose that end to be a nice straight line. We won't put any glue flaps on here, so I'll do a nice dark line. In between each of the others, they're all fold lines. So I'm gonna draw them either very lightly or as a series of dashed lines. Okay, and then remember uh, uh, um, the shape that we're making, the cuboids have six sides. So I've got one, two, three, and four there. So at some point I need to add two more. I'm gonna to choose to come off this one here. And like we've done before, I'm gonna make my ruler sit on the line, but I'm gonna come out two and I'm gonna come out to that side. So I'm basically going from zero to two, and then from six to eight. Go to the next one. Zero to two, six to eight. All right, and then I'm just gonna darken those two ends in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's my cuboid, it's got six sides to it. Now, um, glue flaps, for me, doesn't really matter on this one. You need to have a method of attaching that to that, and that to that, and that to that, and that to that. And then finally you need one, the wraparound one that's gonna attach there. So, That'll do it. So what we'll do is, using my number technique, the bottom of the numbers, touching that line there, make a small line. Join it up as a glue flap. So I'd drawn those lines a bit dark, hadn't I? So when I'm cutting this out, I've got to remember not to cut that. So again, I'm drawing it, I'm not quite going into the corner. I'm freehanding this because I can, and it won't be seen. I could do it a little bit more accurately, 
but I'm trying to be quite quick. So that joins that, which means that I can darken that shape in. And then I need one at the top, which is going to join up over there. So I'll do that up here. Use my numbers to give me my spacing. Draw a line across. And then freehand in my angle. Nearly there, guys. If you've got to this point without banging your head on the table, or even if you have done it with banging your head on the table, uh, well done. It's all about good, this good, they call it muscle memory, how you get your hands um, to, to remember certain processes and, and that this teaches you to draw in a straight line, it teaches you to be able to manipulate tools, that's fine motor skills, um, and all the time you're measuring, you're applying number, you're thinking about line types, it's really good for your brain, it makes you cleverer doing this sort of stuff, um, it's good exercise, PE for the mind. Um, so now what we're going to do is our final shape and how long did that take me? That took me about seven minutes. So this is going to take about seven minutes as well. Um, so this time my middle lines run this way. Okay, so I'm going to just choose a line. Oh. Now what I'm going to do is to draw, make a starting point, just choose where I'm going to begin it, which can be over here, mark down four, don't know why I drew that line then, getting carried away. but that can be our beginning point, kind of. Um, so those, those are four centimeters apart, 40 mil apart. That's our starting point. Ooh. Now I see what I've done. I've made this too close to the bottom edge. It won't work. That's annoying. I'm gonna to have to move the whole thing up. Do you know what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna carry on, but don't make that mistake. The reason that I can carry on is because I will use this one. But look, that one I've got too close to the bottom. I should have been further up to allow me to have two centimetres. Instead of making you watch me rub it out and do it again, I'm going to continue as though I got it right. Okay. So, four centimetres. and make a mark, and four centimeters on the top, and make a mark. Okay, this is a dashed line. Okay, then we go two, and make a mark. This is a dashed line. Now, my pencil's also starting to get a bit blunt. It's always worth making sure that you sharpen your pencil when you need to. So this one's at four centimeters. I should really stop and sharpen it, but I actually haven't got a pencil sharpener here and I want to get this video done. So um, if you need to pause the video and do the, get your pencil sharpened, do it. Right, so that's four, that's two, that's four. That's only three sides, I need another one up here. So my line was a bit short there. So this one has to be two centimeters from this one. Okay. So I've got four, two, four, two. Remember this is six sided, so I need to have my two sides somewhere and they're gonna come down here. So if you get your pencil, get your ruler lined up on this line here 
and then you're going to go from 0 to 8, 0 to 2, then the 4, and then the 2, then the 6 to 8. Same over here. From 0 to 2, and then from 6 to 8. And then darken that line in. Darken this line in. Let <laughs> me notice how I'm pretending. Do they pretend? That was my mistake. Right, so looking pretty good now. We've only got a couple of bits to do. We're going to add a glue flap on this end. We're going to add one, two, three glue flaps here and three glue flaps here. But if you look, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's my cuboid job done. Using my line of my numbers to give me one, two, three. So these are my glue flaps. Join those little fellas up. Slightly avoiding my corners. So again, you might want to get a bit crazy with your with your ruler getting that right. Now this one lined up with my numbers. Okay, and then the final bit that's missing is the glue flap. Could go there, could go there. I'm going to do it at this end. Okay, and like I say, your glue flaps, sometimes they can get really fancy. If you're doing beautiful packaging, they can get really complicated. Um, so they interlock or they hide in slots and all sorts of stuff. But anyway, that, that's our layout of our page. Before you go into any scissoring and cutting out, I want you to make sure that you've checked that you've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides on each shape. Make sure your glue flaps, you think about how they match a particular side. Okay, just give it, give it a double check. Check the quality of your work, that's quality assurance. Um, and then the next thing that you're gonna do is to cut them out. Now, I will do this in slightly high speed. I'm going to cut all three out and then fold all three at the same time. So my method is very much one of, uh, do you know what? I'm going to cut this sheet. I would separate them off first of all so that you don't accidentally cut one whilst you're busy thinking about one shape. If you separate them into their three separate bits before you do any final cutting, you're much less likely to, to spoil one. So again, I'm working with paper, it makes it very, very easy to cut. If you're working with card, you might have to work a little bit harder at it. Um, but these are my one, two, three pieces. Um, equally if you're working with card you'd have to do a bit more sort of scoring of lines where it folds. The benefit of card is that the shape will hold itself up better. Um, whereas when you'll see when we come to assembling this, this gets all wobbly and, and hard to hold. Um, you can do it because we're going to do it but it, it's in some ways it's easier to use your cereal packet than it is to do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to spend a bit of time now cutting this into its various positions. Okay, take your time. Do not cut off the wrong bit. All right, I'll see you in a minute.
Okay, so now that I've got those shapes cut out, uh, my next process is to bend them and look at my fold lines and try and sort of ease it into position first of all. And uh, I'm going to use a <clears throat> number of choices. I'm going to use a prick stick to join this together. You might also think about using some masking tape or some cello tape. And I also sometimes like a bit of, if I was doing a card model, I'd often use a bit of um, wood adhesive applied with my finger and possibly held together with a bit of masking tape whilst the glue dried overnight. But we'll talk about that possibly on another video. <clears throat> so I'm going to assemble these into, into their individual components and then we'll put those three items together um, in a pretty ugly piece of furniture design. So I kind of pre-bend them before I really push them down because that way if I've not quite got my fold in the right place it gives me a chance to bend it again um, <clears throat> and I can also just sort of check how things fit together. So keep checking your work as you progress through it. So what I've just been doing there is to fold it up and look at how my glue flaps either sit inside or outside my shape. And that allows me to think about where I'm going to apply the glue. So what I'm gonna do is glue most of it and then get this top bit on as my final piece. Um, this is the trick, I think the trickiest bit of it is getting it all folded up into a, into a box. So let's, Let's have a go. So I'm going to do all of my inside pieces of my glue flaps. And then I should just be left with this one. But let's do these ones first of all. I'm not going to glue straight onto my table. Like I said, if I was doing something a bit more permanent, I'd be using white wood glue because um, prick stick doesn't really last the test of time. But if it's all you've got, um, use whatever you've got to hand. Any, any glue will do. What you need to remember is that more glue doesn't necessarily mean more sticky. Quite often it just means more messy or more time to dry. left that front bit open just for a minute didn't could have tucked that one in and again if I was thinking about doing some packaging it might be that that was part of a lid that would be part of the locking mechanism but that's one made <coughs> now that I know it works I can put a bit of glue on that now I might actually decide on this as well because it's a little bit floppy I might put a little bit of extra tape on here to get it all stuck down nicely. But I'm going to treat it quite gently because I could easily break it now whilst I'm messing around with it. So I'm just going to put it off to one side as a little cuboid. Lovely. And get on with my next ones. So there we go, that's, that's almost the shape. And I've just been sort of checking it as I go along to make sure that it fits together properly. Um, some people will tell you, well, mate, you're just making boxes, that's a primary school skill. Um, this is a skill that's <laughs> really quite challenging, particularly working in paper. And it's worth thinking that, you know, there are packaging designers and graphic designers who, who make these sorts of objects and industrial designers and architects who make models using this method and earn proper salaries doing it, it's a proper job. So, you know, although we are making boxes out of bits of paper, the skill involved in it actually takes you um, quite a long way forward if necessary in, in terms of either your career or your future training. OK, 
Okay, and then last one. The trick with this is that it's challenging getting any pressure on it. Pritt stick really needs a bit of bit of a squeeze, and of course, if you squeeze it, you're going to end up breaking your box. So just take your time, make it fit. It's two bits. And then we're on to our final piece. Okay. okay, so there's my three components. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna just put them together um, to turn them into a little little sort of blocky chair. Now, as I say, this isn't really good furniture design, but this is really just to give you something to, um, A, to develop your skills of marking and measuring, um, B, to develop your skills of uh, cutting precisely and fitting things together. That's all, you know, think about how you move your hands and learn to move your hands. The more you practice doing physical things like this, um, the more skillful you become. It's like learning to play the piano or learning to play a musical instrument. It all comes with practice. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put this together like a little chair. Okay. And that's going to form the basis of a perspective drawing that you can do later on. Uh, but that isn't going to hold just with print stick. So I'm going to use a little bit of um, masking tape, I think, to hold it together. Now, when I'm masking tape, I'll use prick stick as well. When I'm using masking tape or cellar tape, what you need to do is to just give yourself some little bits that you can work with and pick up as and when you need it. Now, if I, I'm terrible at wrapping Christmas presents. I'm not, I'm not someone who's good at doing um, taping and really precise folding. But what I do is just give myself some bits stuck on the edge of my table or stuck onto something that I can pick up when I need them without having to try and peel them off. And it doesn't need to be much. Um, it's enough to hold it in position whilst glue dries. Now again, I would normally do this with some white wood glue or some, um, some sticky white glue that you've probably got in your cupboard somewhere anyway. Uh, but I'm gonna start off by doing these two pieces together which are going to form a leg, kind of. Put some glue on there. I'm going to try and hide the joins, like the, the kind of the most folded bits, on the outside of this, or the underside of it. So again, just to support this now, I'm going to use a bit of my masking tape. You can use your cellar tape and just stick that on the side and a little bit just on the side there. Okay, that holds that in position. And then I'm going to join that onto there to form my blocky chair. So a little bit of prick stick, being careful not to trash the whole job. Again, if you've got white wood glue, that would be my preference for this. I'm just going to tuck a bit on a bit of tape on the bottom here because that keeps wanting to come apart. Okay, so that bit is going to go It's going to go there. Okay. Now, I'm going to just put a piece of tape on the side to help hold that together. And a piece of tape there. Right, now at that point, quite a lot of me wants to just leave it alone. There are two things I hate in this world, at least. One of them is prick stick and the other is hot glue. Because they just don't really work very well as far as I'm concerned. But that's what we've got to work with. So there is my sort of 3D 
blocky chair. All right, now if you've got that model made, well done you. Now, again, I might spend a bit of time in a minute, in fact, I will spend a bit of time in a minute, reinforcing, now that I've got the basic object made, I'll spend a bit of time on my joints, probably just running a bit of masking tape or a bit of cello tape along the front to stop it coming off or down the side. Now, the whole point of model making is that you could say to somebody, well, what do you think? Is that proportionally right? How would that fit if it was part of a sofa? What sort of size would a coffee table need to be? So that would be furniture design. If it was something like a, a handheld device, it would allow people to actually handle it and see if it's comfortable. Um, it would allow you to see how it looks in a range of different lights or in a range of different positions. So model making is an exercise in design development and improving your ideas and seeing how things work. So although what we've made there is quite a challenge to make, it's quite a useful exercise in developing some key skills, all right?